Mahindra, it's not exactly a household name in Australia, at least not like your Toyotas and Nissans and Mitsubishis of the world. And that's despite the fact that in its home market, it's easily as big as some of those automakers. Here in Australia, it's more known for its pickup, which is an agricultural paddock bashing ute. But here we are with the XUV 700 to try and escape that image. The question is, with such great competitors on the market in this mid-size seven-seat SUV space, does it have what it takes? Let's find out. Now this car really has its work cut out for it because the precedent for Mahindra SUVs in Australia, well, it isn't so great. Back in 2018, this car's predecessor, the XUV 500, arrived to lackluster reviews despite its similar bargain basement price. Back then, low cost alone simply wasn't enough to crack Australia's heated SUV market. But now, Mahindra is betting on all new generation product to change its fortunes in Australia. This time around, for example, the bargain basement price tag doesn't mean bargain basement equipment. The XUV 700 starts from $36,990 for the base AX7, which makes it now the most affordable new seven-seat midsize SUV in Australia, undercutting important rivals like the Nissan X-Trail, Mitsubishi Outlander, Honda CRV, and even the LDV D90. Unlike the decidedly basic feel of Mahindra's which came before though, the XUV 700 has jumped straight into the 21st century, thanks to an all-new platform, all-new design language, and a development program which Mahindra says has been global from the start. Even the base model AX7 gets 18-inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights, dual 10.25-inch screens for the multimedia and the digital dash, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, synthetic leather interior trim with six-way power adjust for the driver, dual-zone climate, and even a panoramic sunroof. Stepping up to the AX7L at a $3,000 premium adds additional safety equipment like a blind spot view monitor, a more advanced version of the adaptive cruise suite with stop and go, as well as a 360 degree camera system, retracting door handles, a premium audio system, and a wireless phone charger. Bizarrely, it also gets a seventh airbag for the driver's knee, telescopic adjust for the steering column, and dumps the manual handbrake in favor of a digital one. These are all things which are expected equipment on its more mainstream rivals. There's also no options in a range bar a handful of accessories, with five colors being free. In the future, Mahindra says it would like to add some alternate interior trims and hasn't ruled out adding an even more affordable five-seat grade or potentially even a diesel or wheel drive version if things are going well. When it comes to this car's clean sheet design, there are echoes of Mahindra's past in the XUV 700's bodywork, but it has a strong modern flavor which feels as up-to-date as many of its rivals. Gone are the awkward curves and frumpy edges of its predecessors, and instead we're welcomed by a more refined and attractive face, nipped and tucked rear, and a tough roofline and haunches. Inside is where the most dramatic upgrades have been deployed, including an impressive digital cockpit with seemingly decent software, a new more attractive steering wheel and center console, with only a few areas like the elongated shifter, hard plastics, and a manual handbrake in the base car to remind you of its bargain origins. Now the design has come leaps and bounds from the kind of frumpy Mahindra designs of old. You've still got that signature kind of face, which is referential to older Mahindra vehicles, but this shaping through here all looks very cool and contemporary, if not entirely original. And that's kind of reflected in these sort of like Renault look headlights, these kind of tough wheels, which kind of remind me of various other kind of off-roady vehicles and then down the side you've got a nice high belt line it does look kind of reminiscent of every other mid-size suv on the market though and that inspiration doesn't just end on the outside it's quite clear on the inside here where mahindra's taken a huge jump both in terms of styling and quality this wheel here looks like it's been dropped out of a previous gen reno but i like it it's quite light in the hand and it feels good too these screens well they're clearly inspired by mercedes-benz and so is this door mounted control for the seat as well but you know what they look the part they're nice and fast and they work quite well as well now down here I am in the base model car and there is a manual handbrake in this one but if you go up to the L grade that does get an electronic handbrake and most interestingly you've got this switch here which can be used as either a switch to control the navigation or for the volume you can actually change it around that's kind of a, a cool touch. There are more dials too there's dials here for the dual zone air conditioning as well and there's a nice slot here which is a wireless charger on the higher grade and a, and a huge kind of bay for your phone hidden under there as well as two usb a connectors in the door there's a big bottle holder with like a map pocket thing and the space does feel light and airy kind of thanks to that big sunroof and the kind of nice glass house visibility of these windows too let's hop in the back seat 
Okay, second row. So things are pretty good in here. You do sit really high off the ground. You're already sat really high in the front seat, but in here I feel like I'm floating off the ground if I look out the window. It's not necessarily a bad thing, and you can get a step from the kind of uh, accessories list. So if you're having trouble stepping up into this car, well, you've got an option there too. The doors open wide enough to fit a child seat, something like that, which is nice. And the nice seat trim continues. There are some hard plastics in the doors, but you do get something for your elbow too. Matte pockets too. And one thing you get in this car that's kind of rare is a release for this seat. So if you, you are having trouble back here moving the seats forward, someone in the back seat can actually reach forward and move that one up. Nice touch. You also get USB-C in the back here, a slot which might be good for a phone or something, dual adjustable air vents, there's a nice flat floor which makes this middle seat useful, and a bottle holder in the door as well. All right, the third row. Well, I've sat in worse, but I've also sat in better. My knees are hard up against this seat in front of me here. And as you can see, my head is touching the roof too. Although Mahindra does assure us that the third row airbags do extend all the way around, which is a nice safety touch, especially if you're gonna put kids back here. Floor here, again, nice and flat. And there's two big bottle holders in the sides, although there is that kind of hard trim there and two adjustable air vents on each side as well. And this one has a fan speed controller. You also get a 12 watt outlet, but no USB. Mahindra is yet to release an official boot capacity for the XUV700, but the space is cavernous with the third row folded down and tiny with them folded up. The XUV700 is rated to tow 750 kilos unbraked or 1500 kilos braked. It has a decent 196 mm ground clearance and there's a space saver steel spare bolted under the boot. The engine here is a little surprising. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder unit with impressive power figures. See those on your screen now. Only the front wheels are driven in this case via a six-speed automatic transmission. While there's no alternate drivetrain options initially in Australia, there is a 2.2-litre diesel all-wheel drive version available overseas, which the brand said it may consider for the future. Okay, so we're behind the wheel of the XUV700, and well, things are surprising in here because from cheap automakers, generally you get what feels like a cheap driving experience. But I've got to say, there's some surprising attributes to this car that I really didn't expect. First thing I noticed, well, there's a really high driving position in here and visibility is on the whole really quite good. You've got sort of a glass house from these nice big windows. And apart from a oddly large A pillar here, everything looks good out the front as well. And you really do have a commanding view of the road. Like I can peer down over this bonnet and really see what I'm doing when it comes to low speed maneuvers and that sort of thing. Great for when you're parking around town. This digital dash is really impressive too. It's nice and quick. And these features on here, well, they don't look so bad either. I'm also immediately surprised by the amount of refinement in here. Like this cabin's relatively quiet. The road feels pretty distant. The engine in particular is what took me aback the most. It's super responsive, super quiet. And that turbo surge is really nice too. And then there are a couple of areas where you can tell this car still needs just a little bit of work. The first one is the steering. I noticed it straight away. The steering's really light. It lacks a lot of feel. I'm not getting much feedback in the corners. And while we've been allowed to drive this car on the track and it does handle quite well and behave quite well, the steering doesn't inspire the confidence that it should when it comes to competing with the big boys in the segment like the Nissan X Trail, the Mitsubishi Outlander and others. The ride as well is a bit of a mixed bag. It's quite soft and that does combine with the light steering to make a car that's quite easy to drive in low speed scenarios. But on the other hand, it does make for a car that's a bit sort of bouncy and rolly in the corners. The good news is, unlike other cars in this more affordable value segment like the MGHS, I'm not really getting that kind of under-tuned front wheel drivey kind of feel from this car. It does still feel quite balanced and quite planted on the road, so that's good. Here's another weird thing I noticed, the indicator noise. I don't know if you can hear it on the mic there, but it's like this kind of bright chime noise, which is frankly bizarre, and I think it might get a little bit annoying. And there are a few other little things which might get on your nerves, like the stop-start system in this car can have a little bit of a lag when you're on a hill. That's one thing I took away from the drive loop that we've done today. I'm also pleased to report that this six-speed transmission, well, it's nice and smooth and it falls into the background as well. 
During the launch day for this car, Mahindra even had significant track activities and a demonstration of its active safety suite. And this shows a confidence in this car we haven't seen from some of its Chinese rivals. While it's a minor difference between the way the cars are presented and demonstrated, it does allow us to evaluate the vehicle at higher speeds and in conditions which may normally trigger more ugly driving characteristics that a brand might not want us to see. While it's no track hero, there wasn't really anything the XUV700 did which raised a major red flag in terms of road holding in these conditions. Impressive. Well, it's a car which on the whole is actually really impressive. It's quite comfortable, it's quite refined, the engine's got enough power, and it's reasonably confident, if not inspiring to drive. It really does the ride comfort thing quite well, and I think it'll suit a lot of family-oriented buyers. Officially, the XUV700 is said to consume around 8.3 litres to 100 kilometres. It makes sense for a relatively large SUV with a big turbocharged engine and just six gears, but it's not the best in the segment. There's also no hybrid on the horizon, so don't wait out. Safety is another area where some budget players fall short, but as with the rest of this car, Mahindra is promising revolution rather than evolution when compared with its previous offerings. To that end, the XUV700 is offered with auto emergency braking, a first for the brand, alongside lane keep assist with lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control and traffic sign recognition, although only the higher grade gets blind spot monitoring and a 360 degree parking camera. Six airbags are also standard with curtains covering the third row, but interestingly, the top grade gets a seventh driver's knee airbag. Should additional airbags be behind a paywall? We don't think they should. Really, the verdict on safety is out until Mahindra secures a five-star ANCAP safety rating, which is yet to occur. Finally, warranty terms. You've got seven years of warranty, and that's limited to 150,000 kilometers following the footsteps of its Chinese and Korean rivals. You also get seven years of roadside assist, but at the time of filming this review, they were yet to decide on what cap price servicing looks like. We love a car that manages to subvert expectations, and the XUV700 certainly manages to do that in more than a few areas. It's great value, it's well packaged, and it's got plenty of gear on the inside, especially at the asking price. The question is, is there room for another competitor in this value space, particularly with the likes of MG, Haval, and LDV all playing in this space alongside those traditional competitors? Only time will tell.